Hi kids, um, today I am going to read out loud to you our new literature book, Mr. Putter and Tabby Pour the Tea, and it is by Cynthia Reliant, Reliant, and it is a great story, so make sure you have your book in front of you. Uh, pause this if you do not and go get it, and I will read Mr. Putter and Tabby Pour the Tea. You know, in the table of contents, we can tell that there's three different sections. These work as chapters because it is all one story, but there are three different sections there that all have a title on it. First one is Mr. Putter. Before he got his fine cat Tabby, Mr. Putter lived all alone. In the mornings, he had no one to share his English muffins. In the afternoons, he had no one to share his tea. And in the evenings, there was no one Mr. Putter could tell his stories to, and he had the most wonderful stories to tell. All day long, as Mr. Putter clipped his roses and fed his tulips and watered his trees, Mr. Putter wished for some company. Notice the pictures, kiddos, because they add a lot to the story. He had warm muffins to eat, he had good tea to pour, and he had wonderful stories to tell. Mr. Putter was tired of living alone. Mr. Putter wanted a cat. Chapter 2, Tabby. Mr. Putter went to the pet store. Do you have cats? He asked the pet store lady. We have 14, she said. Mr. Putter was delighted. But when he looked into the cage, he was not. These are kittens, he said. I was hoping for a cat. Oh, no one wants cats, sir, said the pet store lady. They are not cute. They are not peppy. Mr. Putter himself had not been cute and peppy for a very long time. He said, I want a cat. Then go to the shelter, sir, said the pet store lady. You are sure to find a cat. Mr. Putter went to the shelter. Have you any cats? He asked the shelter man. We have a fat gray one, a thin black one, and an old yellow one, said the man. Did you say old? Asked Mr. Putter. The shelter man brought Mr. Putter the old yellow cat. Its bones creaked, its fur was thinning, and it seemed a little deaf. Mr. Putter creaked, his hair was thinning, and he was a little deaf too. So he took the old yellow cat home. He named her Tabby, and that is how their life began. Chapter 3, Mr. Putter and Tabby. Tabby loved Mr. Putter's tulips. She was old, and beautiful things meant more to her. She would rub past all the yellow tulips. Then she would roll past all the red tulips. Then she would take her bath among all the pink tulips. Mr. Putter clipped roses while Tabby bathed. In the mornings, Mr. Putter and Tabby liked to share an English muffin. Mr. Putter ate his with jam. Tabby ate hers with cream cheese. In the afternoons, Mr. Putter and Tabby liked to share tea. Mr. Putter took his with sugar. Tabby took hers with cream. And in the evenings, they sat by the window and Mr. Putter told stories. He told the most wonderful stories. Each story made Tabby purr. One, on summer days, they warmed their old bones together in the sun. On fall days, they took long walks through the trees. And on winter days, they turn the opera up very loud. After a while, it seemed as if they had always lived together. 
Tabby knew just what Mr. Putter was going to do next. Mr. Putter knew just what Tabby was going to do next. In the mornings, each looked for the other as soon as they opened their eyes. And at night, each looked for the other as their eyes were closing. Mr. Putter could not remember life without Tabby. Tabby could not remember life without Mr. Putter. They lived among their tulips and trees. They ate their muffins, they poured their tea, they turned up the opera and enjoyed the most perfect company of all. Each other. And if you look on the very back cover of your book, I think most of them had this on there, there is a whole list of Mr. Putter and Tabby books and they are just precious. And um, I'd suggest that maybe you look for some of those either through a digital library, um, Audible, or I told your parents, I'm gonna look at some other uh, avenues to see if we can find some of these things. But Mr. Putter and Tabby books are Wonderful, and I know you all will love them. So if you get a chance, uh, maybe look at this book again by yourself and try to read it um, to yourself, and you and your parents can share this together tomorrow. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the book. Bye-bye.